Spring is here and the garden is beginning to burst into life. Now that the risk of frost is passing, it's time to start thinking about seeding the lawns. There are three main lawn areas that I'll be tackling today. Now I'm using the term lawn pretty loosely. There's good grass coverage in parts, as well as an array of wildflowers throughout. However, there are some areas that have become bare or patchy. Perhaps the biggest problem upon closer inspection is moss. The soil here is so moist, being on a floodplain, that it's created the perfect environment for moss to thrive. Today's video will involve weeding and clearing back new areas, prepping the lawns using a scarifier and an aerator, as well as the entire seeding process. This video will be fairly long, so I've broken it down into timestamp segments which you can find in the description. Clearing and weeding. The first area I wanted to clear was on the top lawn around the goal. This fence was drowning in ivy and completely falling apart, so I started by removing it and weeding the area behind it. Now I've got rid of all of the old fence, it's got rid of all the nails, and I can introduce the newest member of the channel. Hello, Sunny boy. Hello, Sunny boy. So this is my new puppy, Sunny. I've had him for about two months now. He's about four months old. If you're interested, he's half lab, half border collie. And as he grows up, he's gonna be a very big part of the channel. He's gonna be with me doing all of the gardening stuff. He's my little gardening companion. Got myself a little friend. I'm gonna go put him back somewhere safe. Oh. Spin. Once it was clear, I added some topsoil in parts where the lawn had sunk over time or where there were small holes. The next focus was on the bottom lawn. I cut back all the ivy around the trees and then did some weeding along the riverbank.
The grass was now ready for a cut. I set the mower as short as possible. This is to help prepare the lawns for scarification and seeding. Scarification and raking. There's clearly a very big moss problem in parts of the garden, and this would be the time that I would apply a moss killer to the lawns. Whilst I am open to using moss killers in the future, I wanted to wait until Sunny's a little bit more grown up, just as a precaution. I hired this petrol lawn scarifier to help remove thatch and moss from the lawns. It was my first time using a scarifier, so it took a bit of time to find the most effective depth. It also didn't help how uneven the lawns are. After the little play about with the scarifier, I then scarified twice over every lawn, with the second pass being at a slight angle. If I were to go at more of a right angle, it would increase the risk of damaging the grass. On the top lawn, I made a third pass at a slightly lower depth. As the scarifier is going over this soil, it's so wet that it's causing it to sink and you can see the blades are hitting the ground a little bit. Ever since changing to a little bit deeper, it's definitely making much more of a difference when it comes to the moss. You can see here, got a nice big pile of moss. Obviously it's not perfect, it's not getting out every single bit of moss, but this alongside aeration should definitely make a difference to the drainage. For areas that were too wet or awkward to reach with the scarifier, I used a springtime rake to remove as much moss as possible. Aeration. Aeration involves punching loads of little holes into the lawn. These small holes promote stronger root growth and should help with drainage. I hired this aerator at the same time as the scarifier. It came with both regular spikes and hollow plugs. I initially fitted the spikes and went over all the lawns, except for areas with any large tree roots.
This area of the top lawn was so compacted and waterlogged, so I switched over to the hollow plugs. These work similarly, but they remove small soil plugs and put them back onto the lawn. They can be left to degrade back into the soil, but I decided to let them dry and remove them. I then repeated this process again to try and remove as much of the compacted soil as possible. The final bit of prep before seeding was to install some grass grids. This is because lots of table tennis gets played in the garden and it destroys the grass. These mats should add some reinforcement whilst allowing the grass to grow through. I rolled the mats out and used some heavy duty pegs to secure them flush to the ground. They look a bit strange at the moment, but when the grass takes hold, I'm sure they'll disappear. I made sure that all the dry patches have been watered before seeding. Seeding and dressing. Given the variety of different conditions that all of the lawns experience, I opted for three different seed blends. The first of these is just for general overseeding. This should be a fairly hard wearing and fast growing blend. I used a seed spreader to spread this seed at around 30 grams per square meter across all of the lawns. This second seed blend is specifically designed for shady areas that receive little sunlight. I spread this throughout shady areas on the bottom lawn. Once I was satisfied with the initial spread of seeds, I added a dressing of topsoil and compost in certain areas. The final seed blend is supposed to be a very hard wearing mix. They should do well in both sunny and shady areas. After evenly spreading the dressing into a thin layer, I added another covering of grass seed and worked it into the soil. I repeated this process across all of the lawns, trying to target patchy areas and spots with poor soil.
The final stage of seeding was to lightly roll the lawns. This should help the seeds make contact with the soil, allowing for germination. And now it's just a case of watering the lawns and letting nature take its course. I do need to get some lawn feed to encourage some vigorous growth, but again, I'll probably wait until Sunny's a little bit older. It will be interesting to see the lawns thicken up over time. I'm not expecting the result to be perfect, and I'll be addressing any remaining bare patches in the future. But hopefully lots of the seed establishes and the lawns do start to thicken up. I'll be providing an update in around a month or so, so be on the lookout for that. And that brings an end to today's video. If you made it this far, please like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and have a nice day.